This video is an anti-differentiation technique for something called U-substitution. It's usually the first anti-differentiation technique that you learn in a calculus class. Now, lots of indefinite integrals do not require a U-substitution. When you first start learning these things, the definite integrals, the, in the antiderivatives rather, are more or less, not obvious, but you can sort of guess your way through them without a whole lot of thought. Like, for example, you know that the antiderivative of cosine is sine because sine differentiates easily to cosine. This one is no problem. You, you can just say, oh, that's sine x plus c. And this thing here, we covered these in class. We figured out that this is kind of like 3 over x, and so there's going to be a log involved. And if you do enough of these, you can just eyeball them up and figure, all right, this is going to be 3 ln absolute. 2x minus 4, and because of this 2, we're going to have to divide the answer by 2 to make sense for when we differentiate this with the chain rule, plus c, and that's the way we go. We can always easily check the answers with differentiation. But then there are other kinds of antiderivative problems where the answer is not immediately obvious, or it's not, it's, it's not clear that the integrand is a straight-up derivative of something. Two such cases are this and this. Nothing differentiates straight to 2x times cosine of x squared. It's something that's more complicated than what we're used to. It's a little more complicated than just a regular cosine x. This one's straight up, that one not so much. Same thing here. Nothing differentiates that we commonly encounter straight to tangent x. Uh, tan theta. If we had secant squared, no problem. That answer is tan. If we had tan theta times secant theta, d theta, that would also be no problem. That would be secant theta. But these two are not sort of straight off of the boat, straight up. So we need a technique for figuring these things out, and that technique is called U-substitution. First, I want to do this with just a little bit of guesswork. All right, so there's a cosine in it, so you might reason that the answer is going to have to have a sine in it because sine differentiates to cosine. So let's just try that out. We could say sine. But sine of what? Well, since there's an x squared in here, we might just randomly guess that it could be maybe it's a one-third x cubed, maybe it's just an x squared. I'm going to go with x squared to see what happens. And then I'm just going to leave it at that, say plus c. Now how can I verify whether this is the correct answer? All I have to do is differentiate it. So the derivative of sine is cosine of x squared, and then by the chain rule, we have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside, which is 2x, the c drops. And we guessed at the answer. This is actually the correct answer. The antiderivative of 2x cosine x squared is sine of x squared plus c. Now, you can guess through it, but there are going to be more complicated problems where you won't be able to just guess what the answer is. All right? this, is this is a pretty easy one. Some people see it right away, but it's alright if not. Because it leads us into doing what the actual technique is for taking this thing apart. And so let's start off with our first U substitution. What U substitution involves is taking an integral with just x, all right, all x's, and getting rid of the x's and converting it to a different integral with a different variable, u that is easier to anti-differentiate. So it's like we're taking this problem and we're coming up with an equivalent problem with a different variable. And it's equivalent, but it's easier to solve. And then we solve it and then just see how it all comes together. What you gotta do first is you have to somehow get rid of all of these x's, replace them with u's somehow, and then replace dx with du. The way to do that is, you've got to search in here, this is, this is the heart of a U substitution. You have to find some kind of an expression inside here whose derivative is also somewhere in there. So you look for a couple seconds, you see there's cosine, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, there's no sine in there, that's no good. When you hit across this thing here, the x squared, the derivative of x squared is 2x. That's how you know what to make u. You say let u equal x squared. 
as soon as you figure out, as soon as you pick what you want you to be, you have to differentiate it. So that's like a step two. Differentiate this. We get du dx is 2x. Is 2x here, and the 2x appears elsewhere in, in the problem. That's a good sign. That's what you want to look for. Now, when you get to this uh, stage, I'm going to put the dx on the other side. I'm never going to write it like this again. I'm never going to write du dx is something. Instead, I'm always going to write du equals 2x dx. I'm going to kind of pre-bring this part over to the other side. And this is what I'm really going to be working with. So we're working with this, which came out of this. Now, once you picked it, once you select what you should be, I like to do what I call a temporary rewrite. I rewrite the integral with u substituted in for my chosen, whatever I chose to substitute it in for. So it will be the antiderivative of 2x cosine, what used to be x squared will now be u, because that's what I called it, dx. All, right, all I did was cash this out and put a u in its place. So then the question becomes, you have to get rid of this x and this dx now. You have to convert those somehow to something involving du. Can you do that with the derivative that you took earlier, is what the question is. And the answer in this case is yes. Straight up, we have 2x dx. You should see this. This is all just a big multiplication. This is 2 times x times cosine u times dx. So if you, you rearrange it, 2x dx, I can replace that directly with just du. And that's the making of a successful u substitution. We'll have what used to be 2x dx is now all just du. And you got rid of all the x's, you got rid of dx, and you wound up with a simpler integral. Something that we know how to integrate. The antiderivative of cosine u is sine u plus c. And the problem is basically done at this point. The last step that we have to do once we carry out this anti-differentiation is to substitute back in what u was. U was originally x squared, so the final answer is the sine of x squared plus c, which is the same thing that we got through the creative guesswork. And that's how you do a use substitution. It looks really complicated, but once you, you do like a dozen of these, it kind of falls into place. Again, the first thing that you got to do is find something whose derivative is also in there somewhere. So this was a really easy example. The derivative of x squared is 2x. That's how you know what to make u. Let u be that. As soon as you pick that, differentiate it. I'm always going to skip this step, and I'm going to always bring this right up here and just write this here from now on. So then after you do that, I temporarily rewrite it, and I have to get rid of the other stuff around it and turn it into its equivalent and use if possible. I do so if I can, and if I wind up with something that's easier to anti-differentiate, awesome, and I anti-differentiate it, and the final step, go back to the x variable, and the problem is done. And that was the first example. Let's see what else we can do. But before I get into that, I want to show you what happens if you do a substitution incorrectly. It happens all the time, it's a rookie mistake. This, the problem worked out very well because I knew what to make you in advance, but if you pick the wrong thing to make you, the problem isn't going to work out. Sometimes it might, very rarely, but it's usually not going to work out. There's usually only one right choice of you. So let's suppose that instead of picking u to be x squared, we try to go with cosine of x squared. So we say let u equal cosine of x squared. So once we get that, we need the derivative. So that means that du equals, it would be du dx, but I'm going to tack the dx on the other end of this. Uh, du is minus 2x sine of x squared dx, right? And so we do the temporary rewrite stage where I say, all right, I'm going to rewrite it 
and I'll have a 2x, and this whole thing went to u. I let that be u, so that gives me 2x u dx. And it's looking nice and simple for right now. Can we get rid of this x and dx? It might appear so because there's an x dx in here, but that's not going to be the case because we still have this sine of x squared thing left over here. Check it out. If we wanted to cash out 2x dx, right, 2x dx, there's still this negative and the sine of x squared here. So if I take this equation and I isolate 2x dx, and I bring this and the negative over to the other side, I get that 2x dx is actually minus du over the sine of x squared. And if I try to put this expression in place of this in there, I end up with something that's incredibly complicated, more complicated than what I started with. So that's how you know that a substitution will not work. If you end up with something that's really complicated and you somehow can't get rid of all the other x's nicely by what you chose to be uh, your u in the problem. So if it's, if it's going to break down, it's going to break down at this stage. And you'll say, oh, it's too complicated. I better try a different choice of u. As a second example, I have this. This is a candidate for a u substitution because it's not a straight up derivative, right? Nothing nice differentiates to 2x over 1 minus x squared. So how do you carry it out? You've got to look for something whose derivative is also in there. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to completely perfectly match up. You can mess it up by a little bit uh, as far as being in there perfectly goes. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The x squared here, the derivative of x squared, just like in the last problem, is 2x. So I could make this u and get away with it. But I'm going to say, I'm going to let u be the entire denominator. And here's why, because when I differentiate it, you'll see I've been able, I'll be able to finagle it and get what I want out of this expression. So I'm going to say let u equal 1 minus x squared because the, the derivative of this, just to be clear, the derivative of this is negative 2x. Now there isn't a negative 2x in there. We have a 2x, but we'll be able to get away with it. Watch. If u is 1 minus x squared, we can say that du is minus 2x squared minus 2x dx. Don't forget that dx or you're really going to go wrong. du dx is this, minus 2x dx. So then I continue with my temporary rewrite, and that has 2x over what used to be that is now u dx. Uh, dx. So the question is, can I get rid of x and dx with my chosen substitution? And the answer is yes. When I rearrange this equation here, for x dx. You know what? I'm going to grab that too, too. I'm going to, I want to isolate this so I can get rid of, right, 2x dx. I want to cash out 2x dx for some equivalent in use. I can't cash it out straight up for du. The negative has to come with it, right? Out of this, what I get is 2x dx is not du, but it's minus du. No problem. We're just going to cash this out for a minus du. So the thing is going to become antiderivative of minus du over u. Or, if you yeah, like, minus 1 over u du. See how that works out? You just got to change up the uh, sign a bit. So this turned into this, which can really be rewritten as this. And we know how to anti-differentiate this. This is the, the natural log. This anti-differentiates to minus ln absolute u plus c. And then the final step is to convert back to u to a x. u was 1 minus x squared. So it's actually, the answer is minus ln absolute 1 minus x squared plus c. And it works out oh so fine. All right? We could check it with differentiation too. It's kind of easy to see that this is the answer because to differentiate, if we ignore this minus for a second, the derivative of the log is 1 over 1 minus x squared. That gives me that. And then by the chain rule, I'm going to have to multiply that by minus 2x. And the sign is going to get flipped because of this negative out front. 
and that gives me back exactly what I want. So this is the answer, second example. Next I got this thing, and it's not obvious that this is a huge substitution problem because it looks like there's only one thing sitting there, it's just a tan theta. And it's not a straight up antiderivative, so, but it is, a, it is a huge substitution problem because tan theta can be broken up into sine theta over cosine theta. And the derivative of sine is cosine, so we're probably in pretty good shape here. It's just a matter of what should we make you, because the derivative of sine is cosine, and the derivative of cosine is sine. Which one are we going to do? In your naive innocence, you might want to say, oh, all right, I'm going to let you be sine, because its derivative is also in there someplace, so maybe it's going to work out. So I'll try it. Uh, if I get u equals sine theta, then du equals cosine theta d theta. And when I do my temporary rewrite, I have antiderivative of what used to be sine on top will be I have u d theta over cosine theta. And as always, the question is, can I get rid of d theta over cosine theta with my chosen substitution? And it doesn't look like that's going to be possible here because the d theta and cosine theta, they're attached by multiplication, not by division. So, I mean, you could actually maybe try to do something else here, but pretty much when you get to this stage, it's going to be a, a dead end, and you went with the wrong substitution. So I'm going to rework this and go back and make u equal to cosine theta, and you'll see it's going to work out a lot better. So here we go, u equals cosine theta. And so du is minus sine theta d theta. So I do my temporary rewrite, and I say definite, uh, I mean the antiderivative of what used to be cosine theta will, will, will be u, so I'll have the sine theta d theta all over u. Can I get rid of sine theta d theta? Yes, it's sitting right there for me. All I got to do is replace it with minus du, right? Bring the negative over to the other side, and now sine, what used to be sine theta d theta will be a minus uh, du. And once again, we have the one over u. This is something that we can do. Natural log, so that's minus ln absolute u plus c. Final step, replace the u, substitute back for the, uh, with uh, the original variable, that would be minus ln absolute cosine theta plus c. Check the answer, make sure that it's correct. The derivative of ln of cosine is 1 over cosine times minus sine. And with the minus sine out front, you get 1 over cosine times minus minus sine. Does indeed give you sine over cosine. The antiderivative of tan, of tan theta is minus ln cosine theta. Here's kind of an oddball one. There's nothing that's really obvious in here, but it shows you how flexible a use substitution can actually be. They can go a long way in solving some uh, antiderivative problems. There's nothing obvious here that says that what we should make u, right? There's nothing whose derivative is in there. So, uh, what do you do? Well, if you just play around with it, just kind of take a chance, we'll see that it's all going to work out. We're going to do a simple substitution. What's causing trouble here is that there's, a, there's an x minus 1 under the, the radical. Now, sometimes, if you can't figure out what to make u, you should usually make it the most complicated looking thing as like a last, you know, last resort kind of technique. So I'm going to let u equal x minus 1. And on the surface, the u is going to equal dx because it's such a, simple, such a simple substitution. On the surface, that doesn't really seem to do a whole lot. Let me do my temporary rewrite. That will give me x square root. What used to be x minus 1 will now be just a u, and I have dx there. Well, the dx I can cash out. I'm pretty good there. I can get a du out of that. Is there a way that I could possibly get rid of this extra x hanging around? The answer is yes. U substitution is a very flexible technique. By going back here, 
if u is x minus 1, then x is u, uh, yeah, x is u plus 1, right? So you just squeeze that in here, x equals u plus 1. That's the equivalent statement. So I can cash out this x for u plus 1. Let's see where that gets me. u plus 1, wrap with u, du. Again, this might not look like it's, like it's all that hot, but you can distribute this in here and you'll get two terms, each of which you can do the power rule on. So, when I write that out, and I do the distribution, this will give me u to the 3 halves, right? You add the exponents, uh, plus u to the 1 half, du. And then we can just do the power rule on it. I'm going to continue it down here. So, 3 halves plus 2 halves is 5 halves. So that's going to anti-differentiate to 2 fifths uh, u, oh, yeah. two fifths u to the five halves plus one half plus two halves is three halves, so that's going to be two thirds, right? Divide by three halves, u to the three halves plus c, and the problem is basically done. All you have to, to do now is substitute back in dx minus ones for u's. So the final result will be two fifths x minus one to the 5 halves plus 2 thirds x minus 1 to the 3 halves plus c. Now that's a disgusting mess and I'm not going to bother checking it. You're just going to have to take my word that it actually does work out right. But because your substitution was so simple, that's what allowed us to kind of play around with it in sort of a, in a way that, did, we didn't, that wasn't available to us with the other problems. Usually, you just try to look for something whose derivative is also in there. But on occasion, you can get away with stuff like this, too. Lastly, I just want to do a u substitution on a pretty simple example. An example that doesn't really need it, but as far as I know, every other teacher in the world makes you do a u substitution on something like this. I just want to show you that it can be done. Now, we know that the answer is going to be, uh, you have it to the sixth power, so th this thing is going to be, we already know, it's going to be 7x minus 4 to the 7th. And it's going to be a 1 7. And this, this, uh, this extra 7 here is going to make us have to divide by another copy of 7. So we know that the answer to this is going to be 1 49th of 7x minus 4 to the 7th power plus c. We know this in advance. But there's a huge substitution way of doing it too. And the way to, to do that is, typically people say to let u be the inside piece. We're going to say let u equal 7x minus 4. That way du equals 7dx. So, when you go to, the, to do the, the rewrite, you get the antiderivative of u to the 6th dx. So, we still have to get rid of that dx. The dx is 1 7th du, right? 1 7th du is dx. That's where that extra 1 7th comes from, right? So we replace dx with 1 7th du, and the problem becomes integral 1 7th u to the 6th du, which anti differentiates very nicely to 1 49th u to the 7th plus c. And finally, making the replacement 1 49th uh, 7x minus 4 to the 7th plus c. I think doing a u substitution on something like this is overkill, but it's nice to know that the method is available in case you forget how to do it the old shortcut way. Before I stop this, I just want to leave you with a couple of different problems here. I want you to try to solve this with two different substitutions. Both of them will work. But one of them takes a little bit of uh, more playing around with the expression. You should probably write these down now, pause the video, and try to figure out the substitutions on your own. And I'm going to make two recommendations now. The effective one for this one is let u equal sine x. If you go with sine x, you'll find that that's going to take care of it. This will be a u squared, and the derivative of sine is cosine. You'll be able to knock that straight out. But for a challenge, you should also try 
u equals sine squared x. It's a little more difficult, but it's possible. All right, try to try to work with it. it, it it's flexible. It'll get you eventually to the same answer. With this one down here, the obvious solution is u equals x squared. You can run through that. But something curious, something specific with the exponential ones, if you also try u equals e to the x squared, you'll find that the, that the problem might be a little bit easier. That's something that's particular to e's. You can usually grab e's with uh, these kinds of things, and things will work out nice. I want to leave you with a couple of tips. There are two things that you should never do when you do a u substitution. Oh yeah, one, never let u equal x. Never do it. It's never going to work. Because the only thing that this does is replaces all the u's, I'm mean, sorry, all the, the, the x's with u's, and you haven't done anything. The problem doesn't change at all. You're just using different symbols. So, let u equal x, never let u equal x. Another thing to never do that almost never works, I think I've seen it work one time, so I don't work on any of my tests, never let u equal the whole thing. All right, never let u be the entire thing. That's pretty much never going to work for you. All right, it just doesn't work out well that way. The general way when you're first starting out doing these is to look for something whose derivative is also in there somewhere. Let that thing be u. And this technique is really the reverse. You're doing the, the chain rule in reverse. So that's why you want to try to find something whose derivative is also in there because you want to reverse the chain rule, get things to knock out. That's why this dx is here, because it gives us a way to figure it out. All right, so try to pick something whose derivative is also in there somewhere, although that's not, that won't always work, it won't always be available, uh, but it's not always necessary either. If you're really out of options and you, have, and you just have no idea what to do, sometimes you might throw the dice let u equal the most complicated looking thing in there. All right? If you let u be really complicated it, and you do the du dx part, you might just find that the problem works out in the end. So that's a, that's a last ditch effort. Um, that's a use substitution lesson. And um, thanks for watching.